Okay, hello everyone. Uh, this is Julie with Julie's Craft Cave, and today we are going to make a cross wreath. I'm going to show you how uh, I make these. The materials that you're going to need for this is a Dollar Tree Dollar Tree cross wreath form. You're also going to need some uh, floral wire or something for a hanger. You can use a um, pipe cleaner. You could use it. I've seen people use zip ties. I just prefer this because it stays nice and flat and they, it, you know, it doesn't move if they're trying to hang it. Uh, the other thing that you're going to need is your 10 inch deco mesh. You're going to cut these in 10 inch pieces, 10 by 10. I use a wood burner that I got from Walmart because it uh, prevents it from fraying. It doesn't stop it completely, but it does make the edges look a lot smoother and you don't have those little uh, plastic pieces sticking out. We're also going to be making uh, a ribbon. We got two and a half inch. This is like a sheer nylon wired ribbon. And this ribbon, this ribbon I get at Old Time Pottery, but you could probably get it at any craft store like Hobby Lobby. Walmart probably even has it. And then I get this at Hobby Lobby uh, in the wedding section. It's just a nice white. It's really pretty. Uh, makes the wreath look nice for Memorial Day. So um, the other thing you'll need is just some a paddle wire for making the uh, bow to attach to the frame for the wreath. And of course, our zip ties. I use these little four inch zip ties I get from Amazon. I think I get them in packs of a thousand for like six or seven dollars. So it's a lot cheaper uh, than going to Walmart to get them. I used to get them at Walmart. And then they went from like a dollar fifty for a pack of a hundred to like three dollars and something. So the inflation's a little crazy everywhere. So you're gonna need to cut, um, you're gonna need at least two rolls of white deco mesh. This has the iridescent lines in it just to give it a little sparkle. Um, 52 pieces of this so we are going to be adding I believe I put maybe two maybe six, 10 pieces on the top eight pieces on both sides and 22 pieces down here and then I put one in each of the corners so you'll see that uh, here when I start making it. So we're gonna use these two uh, inside rails here, the wires, and we're gonna be just attaching all the way down from the top down two, four, six, eight, ten. And the way that we're gonna fold these you're always going to want to go with a fold up like that and we're going to be folding them in half matching up your corner up here and then just just trying to make your sides as even as possible out here and then basically what we're going to be doing is just from this corner here, from here to here. I, I used to do it from here up, but it's a lot easier if you start on this end. We're going to scrunch it right to the tip. So do you see how that makes it look like angel wings? Oh boy, it's gonna be one of them days. So that's uh, how we're going to make our, what I call petals, uh, to put on the cross wreath. And I always try to look to see which side is better. Like what side do I want to attach? This is probably a little bit better on this side. And I always just have my zip tie loaded and ready. I will uh, show you another trick here in a second if you want to make all your petals ahead of time. So I just, I go to this side over here lay it across the top of the zip tie my handy dandy if you've watched any of my videos you'll see I use these a lot I have um, 
my hands don't like to cooperate. And I broke my thumb here about five, six weeks ago, so that makes it uh, even a little bit harder. And you just want to make sure that you get enough of that down in there. So that when you tighten it, it stays in the zip tie. So there you have your first petal. And then we're going to lay one right next to it. You could start these zip ties if you want. We'll make it a little bit easier. Just don't pull it too tight because you want to be able to put uh, the tip of your petal inside of there. Now, do you guys see that there where it started? And then we're going to grab another piece of deco mesh. And we're going to do the same thing we just did. Bring your uh, corner up here together. Just match up your edges best you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, and then you're just going to hold this. And you're going to use your fingers to scrunch it up to the corner here. And then bring it back just like that, like a set of angel wings. And then when you pick this up, you're just gonna hold this here and then just kind of pinch it together here to pick it up. And then you can come over. Just set it inside of the zip tie that we started. Push it back next to the other one and pull it tight. Make sure too that your uh, deco mesh kind of stays up here, otherwise you'll have your petals will be uh, falling all over the place. As you set more on top of these, it'll make it a little bit uh, easier for them to stay down. So we're just gonna cut off our zip ties. And get ready for the next one. So I always like to start under, see how this petal goes under this one next to it? I like to alternate them. So because this one is under over here, I'm gonna put this one here under on this side. And I'm gonna show you a little trick that you can do if you wanna prepare these petals ahead of time. These are just light, uh, just little, you can see it right here, just barely, they're clear little rubber bands that you can get in like a pack uh, they come like in a pack of a hundred you can get these at Walmart and they're just for uh, little girls hair uh, Walmart uh, Dollar Tree has them and if you want to make your petals ahead of time you can fold your petal just like I just showed you from corner to corner these little pieces here is what I'm talking about with fraying. So if you see that happening, just pull it off. Easy peasy. You don't want to put that on there because you don't want it sticking out on your wreath. So we've got our petal ready to go. And we're just going to squeeze, 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 squeeze to the tip. Fold it back like angel wings. Sometimes I play around with these a little bit just to cover stuff up. I like the cut side and just like I said we're just going to pinch it here not not too tight because you don't want to take away from the wing look and then just put hold this here and then grab one of these little ties little hair ties and just wrap it around there just like that so you see how now your petal is is good and ready to go on the wreath. Let's do that one more time. The great thing about making the petals ahead of time is that you can arrange them the way that you want uh, on your wreath. Pinch it, pinch it, pinch it, pinch it. And then just gonna hold it just like a set of angel wings. Pinch that together, just like that. You grab one of your hair ties. I wrap it around twice just to secure it a little bit better so it doesn't come apart. So one wrap, two wrap. 
And once you put that on there, you're just going to have to uh, play around with it a little bit and, and straighten your pedal out. So easy peasy. We have two more done. See, this stuff gets attached to each other and it causes that. So just be very careful when you're making it that you don't uh, pull your deco mesh apart. Wood burning, uh, cutting it with a wood burner is makes it a lot nicer uh, when you're putting it all together. I've seen some wreaths that have been put together and they were cut and they weren't cut up evenly on the deco mesh and it just makes a mess. So this one's on top, on bottom now. And then we're gonna put one on the other side here with the petal we just made. And just slide it up here. If it sticks to each other, just be super careful. Don't pull too hard and just slide it next to that other one. So now you can see I have one up, one under, one under, one up. So now they're laying nice and even. If you put all of them on here, on this side first, and then all of them over here, and don't alternate them, it, it would make it look a little uh, lopsided. I get these little, uh, little needle nose pliers is the only thing I own craft size little that I don't buy at the hardware store because my hands are small and they work great but it just helps tighten your uh, zip tie up as far as wire cutters those you definitely want to get at like a hardware store okay so we're gonna be putting 10 up here so we need to have Six more. And because this one's on top, we're going to start over here first to alternate. You're always going to put the one on the bottom first. Zip tie on here and get it ready. And yet, However this works for you and you're comfortable is fine. I'm just showing you how I make my cross. So again you're going to bring those two points together like a like a triangle uh, pyramid I guess almost. Um, and then just pinch with your fingers to those corners. Bring your petals back. Just lay it over top of the other petal and pull your zip ties tight. And you want to cut these off every time because you, when you lay your other ones on, those zip ties would be sticking up. It would be hard to get them off in the end. And you can play around with these and lay them however you want. So we have right now six on the top. And if you need to, to make room, you can just push these up. A little bit so you see how this one's on top now we're gonna go under sometimes when they're really curled up like this uh, at the end of the roll they cause these little curly things on the end I just kind of uh, use those pieces of mesh in underneath other pieces that are a little more flat just so they don't get real uh, pointy, sticky out. So we're just pinching it, pulling your petal up. Gathering it together just like that. Get your zip tie up. 
slip it in there. There's lots of uh, ways people make these. This is just, I'm just showing you how I do it. So see how this one's really, really curled up? And this one's not quite as curly. This is probably, you'll see here, see how this is kind of sticking out a little bit. That's why I'm tucking these in under the other ones. It still looks good, and it, they don't have to be perfect, but just eyeball yours just to see uh, how it's looking as you put it together. And sometimes that's why it's better to put all of them together before you put them on the wreath. Pull our petal up, pinch it together, and then come over here. Lay it down on the zip tie. Pull the zip tie tight. Just push them back a little bit. So two more on the top. And this one's on top. So we're starting just below that with the next one. And the last one on the top. So we'll have, oh man, guys, I'm sorry. Every time somebody goes by, the dogs have to bark. <laughs> Tater, come here. Big old boy, no barking. Such is life. zip tie down. And there we have uh, all 10 of them on top. So I'm going to pause the video real quick and I'm going to go uh, prepare the rest of the petals and then I will be back to show you how we're going to put the rest of these on. Okay, so now I'm back and I have all of uh, the other 42 petals are, are pieces of deco mesh, however you want to call it, are ready uh, to attach to the wreath frame. So I'm just going to move a couple of these piles out of the way so we've got room and you guys can see what I'm doing. So I finished the 10 on the top, so now I'm going to be putting uh, 8 on each side of the frame. And we're going to do this the same way that we did for the um, top. We're just going to alternate from one side to the other. So we'll get our zip tie on this side. And you can, where you put the petals together, you can take a look at them and decide which side you like better. So, like with this side, you can see this is curling up this way, but if I turn it around, it's leaning backwards, so you can decide which way uh, you want to put that on. You can see here that it's really curling this way. So we're going to put that to the back. Tighten this one down. Attach it here and then the other one we're going to put right next to it. It's going to go over top of that piece that we just put on. Get our tighten it down. 
Make sure they're tight. You don't want them falling off that wreath frame. And then we're going to take our zip ties off. So just like we did on the top, now we're going to alternate. So this one's above the other one. So now we're going to put the one below that below. Then the other side, we're just going to go above the one that we just put on. See how the petals lay down and then this one's going on top of that. So you almost have like this one here in the middle of this one, this one in the middle of this one. So we're just alternating them back and forth just to get a little texture and dimension. These will stick, just pull them a little bit easy to re rearrange them so you don't pull any pieces, any plastic out of the deco mesh. So that's four. Okay, and then this one's on top, so we're going to start over here. And then the one next to it is going to just lay across the top. And then again, see, we have this little curl here that's flipping up this way. We're just going to turn that around and lay it down so it's not pushing out in front uh, on the wreath. I'm just trying to control the way that it curls. Tighten my zip ties. Look at how they're up here. had to check on the dogs. They were out there yipping and yelling at something. They like to chase the lizards and the squirrels outside. Last week I had a showdown going on with them. So we're just going to complete, continue that process until we get all eight on this side. And if you've lost track, you don't have to go back and lift them to count. You can just flip it over and look at what you have here. So we got two, four, six, and we're putting the other two on here now. So we want eight on this side. So this ready. And you can slide them back and forth on here to just get them arranged the way that you want them. Okay, so now we are flipping to this side. And starting over here. Get our zip tie ready. Put our pedal in there. Repeat the other side here and do eight. And then this was the one on top, so we're starting here, putting this one below, alternating uh, one on top, one below. And then again, we have, see that? Uh, it's really curling this way, so we're gonna. Pick which side we like best and lay that down here. Whoops. Still struggling with my hands after I broke my thumb a few weeks ago, so bear with me. Tighten that down. Get our other side together. And 
And I just, as I'm laying these on here, I'm just playing around a little bit with the way that they lie down so that, you know, there's the petals are kind of alternating um, over each other. I think that was four, right? Yep, we got four, so we need four more. And this one is the one on top. I'm just going to put this one below. I uh, last week posted angel wings that I uh, had made, and they're very made very similar to the way that this is made. And I'm going to do a video later today for that one, and I'll get that posted too. Okay, the last two for this side. Okay, so we have eight and eight, eight over here, eight over here. And remember I said we were gonna put the four in the corner? I wouldn't do these two now. And the reason that I do that is because when you get all these down here, it gets kinda hard to spin this and work with it uh, to get these two in the top up here. But you can see there's just this little box where the bars cross in here. And where they cross right here, that's where I am going to put my corner petal up here. And this just helps fill it in a little bit better. So one on the corner there, just covering up our crossbars there, giving it a little bit more depth. And I just, you know, we'll move these petals side to side, tighten this up. I'll leave that on for a minute because I just want to make sure you guys see where I'm putting these in. Now when you get your zip ties out and get them ready to put in here, sometimes it's a little bit hard to lift it up through here. So I just reach around to the back and just poke it up through. You can just start it for a minute so it'll stay together. Get yourself another petal. I'll just put that in the zip tie. And tighten it down and just position our petals. So now we have uh, the two sides and the top. So I start from the bottom on the bottom part to put the other 22 petals. So you've got one, two, three sections here. This section goes up a little bit higher, not a whole lot, but um, I would do seven, I'm sorry, six, seven, and eight. I believe that's how I do it. We'll find out here in a second. So the same thing here. We're just, we're starting at the bottom, working our way up. And we are going to alternate the petals, just like we've been doing um, on the rest of the wreath. So we're just gonna stick this in here. Oops, 
Don't do that, it's upside down. You want your petals pointing down. So we'll put this one right next to that one. So a few weeks ago, I was uh, my husband was helping me uh, get my workshop organized, or what we like to call the craft cave. And we were getting, so this one's on top, so we're going to start here. Uh, we were getting the cabinets off the back of the truck. And the last cabinet, I went to get down off of the truck, jumped and didn't get off the truck the way that I wanted to. I landed in my face, trying to catch my body with my hands, and I face planted, broke my, broke this thumb. It's still not 100%. And had quite a few bruises and injuries, but I'm making a comeback. It's been hard to craft and get orders out, but you guys, I think you guys saw the one day my husband was actually helping me make uh, wreaths so I could get my orders out. Super important on Etsy right now, uh, especially since I'm a star seller, to make sure that I ship my uh, orders out in a timely fashion because that's one of the qualifications for star seller is your shipping has to be. on time. I think I actually do eight, eight, and six, eight, eight, and six. I've got six here. This will be our sixth one on the bottom. And we're just, remember, we're just alternating them. One on bottom, one on top. And we're putting two next to each other. And there's six on the bottom. I'm going to do seven and eight here on these crossbars. Just keep working your way right up. This one's the one next to it and goes on top just to alternate them. I have to turn this way to show you guys because it's easier, but normally I have it going this way because I'm right handed and that's working this way works better for me. So we're just going to turn it around because we're getting up there far enough where you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay. So we've got eight. We're just going to keep going. like to make sure they're tight because you don't want them slipping out like if they're on a door and it's windy or something like that you don't want them being too tight that they pull out uh, of the zip tie you want them staying on the wreath there's the 
there's two. This one's on top, so we're starting here first. Again, this one's on top, so we're starting over here. It's almost like a zigzag pattern when you think about it, when you um, are putting these on here. You're just going here, 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 here. Just going back and forth, alternating. Where to place them. So we put one on that side. And now we're going to put one on this side. Maybe. It's not fun being a crafter and not being able to use your hands like you're supposed to. Alright, this one's on top. It's too close to the bar this time to fit these in here, so we're just going to jump over. show you we're going to put two more uh, in the corner on the bottom here just to fill it in and then we're going to make our bow super easy zigzagging back so we're here here now we're here just below that one I have been going to try uh, some different colors with this, but my white ones seem to sell the best. I thought like a lavender or purple color would be really, really pretty too. So there's two there. set these two aside because we only have four left to go on here and then we're going to put the corners in and all the mesh will then be on the frame. love this wreath it's very I, I wouldn't call it whimsical I think I could I think I would say an, angelic I don't <laughs> I don't know how to describe it but I've made a lot of these and shipped a lot of these to people and a lot of them uh, people keep them uh, they're worried about them getting stolen on the grave site so they just take them and hang them as a memorial These are the last two on the bottom. This mesh that I'm putting on here now 
is from Hobby Lobby, but you could get your mesh anywhere. I know Hobby Lobby has um, up their prices quite a bit, and they're not doing the discounts like they used to do, so I'm not sure what's going on with that, but it's a little strange. Okay, so here's the crossbars again. So we're just gonna put that zip tie in there on this, on this bar here just so our um, angel wings petals our kitty corner there and you can see how that kind of brings these two sides together so over here you've got like an empty spot so uh, what I do is just go back in there in the center here. Like I said, if you can't get that zip tie up through there, just reach to the back and poke it up through. And we're kitty cornering this. Our last petal. It gets a little tight in here with the other petals, so just make sure you've got the end of that in there tighten down tight and then you can arrange these. So this one's going to go there and there. So you see how that filled that in so you don't have as big of a gap. And that's the mesh. So we have all the mesh on. And um, our cross wreath is coming together. I'm going to set this aside. get the bow maker out. Uh, this is the easy bow maker I have to make bows. It's simple, easy peasy. So I just cut a piece of, this is probably about 20, 19 to 20 inches long of wire off my paddle wire, florist wire, so that we can use this to attach to the wreath. And you're going to need a zip tie, a little zip tie. That's going to, it's going to hold the bow together. And when you tighten it down tight, it makes it like kind of fluff up a little bit so it doesn't lay flat. And I like to have with this, uh, bow. I like the tails of the ribbon to hang down a little bit more down the cross. So I, I do, I probably do about a 10 inch tail. So all you're going to want to do is cut like a 20, let's look and see. This is about 21 inches. just going to put that in our bow maker. And flatten it down. I like to put the tails to the back. That's why I cut it off from the ribbon. Because then it stays underneath. And we're going to have a third tail at the end that's going to come right down the center here. So to make our bow, I do five inch loops with this wreath. So you're just going to put this in here, go to the 5 inch mark, flip this upside down, and then come back into here. And you don't have to, with this, flip the ribbon because it's all, it's the same on both sides. So you don't have to twist it and turn it to get the right side out. So then we're going to go to 5 push down. If they get a little bit uneven, just play around with them, pull back and forth on the ribbons. And this is a three loop, uh, it's six loops all together, three on each side with the white sheer ribbon. And you're just coming back and forth in here 
making five inch loops. And it's nice because this is wired, so you can get it to lay out right right here. Okay, so let's see, what do we got? We have one, two, three loops on this side. One, two, three loops on that side. Okay. And like I said, we're going to have a third tail hanging down here. I'm just going to cut this off and we can dovetail them in just a bit. So this ribbon actually, I uh, am almost out of this roll, but I try to use as much of the ribbon as I can. So because I like to put the tails to the back on this one. I got enough here to cut uh, to put my tails in. So you can see with this ribbon laying over top of this ribbon, it gives it uh, another dimension, some more texture. Not really texture, but uh, mostly dimension. So this little piece that's left is probably, uh, it's too short to put on there to make a loop and be connected uh, together in the center. So I'm just, I'm not gonna keep that or do anything with that. I'm just gonna get rid of that roll. Open a new roll. And because you want these to, uh, you don't need to make a tail, so I just put a little bit over here to get caught in here so that it gets attached. These are going to be a four inch. And we're gonna make two on each side. This one, you don't have to turn either because it's uh, double-sided. And it's a little harder to work with because it doesn't have the wire. But you can play around with it a little bit after you get it uh, all zip tied together and have your wire to attach on the back. If you don't like using ribbon that is not wired, I suggest not using this ribbon. until you get a little bit better at making bows, if you don't know how already. Okay, so these other ones in the middle are just a little bit shorter. They're about two and a half inches. And we are going to cut off for our tail. So now we have our bow. That's gonna be what we're gonna put in the center of that wreath. So I don't cut, dovetail my ends or anything yet until I get it on the wreath. And I'll show you uh, why, why I do that here in just a second. So to make this, to put this all together, you're just gonna lift it up. Make sure you've got everything on the bottom. You're gonna put two fingers around the dowels like this and two fingers on top, squish it down and pull it up. Just keeping it together here. And then we're gonna have, in order to attach it, we have to have a floral wire in here. And if your hands won't do this and won't grab the whole thing at once, you can just put your zip tie on here and just loosely attach it and then feed your uh, wire through the back then. love these little needle nose pliers because it allows me to get the very tip of that zip tie that's coming through there and pull it. Now I don't want to pull it tight. I'm going to move this to the back. You can see we've got our uh, floral wire 
back here. And you want to kind of have it even on both sides so that we can attach this to the wreath. And then just look at the front of it and make sure that your uh, loops are nice and even with each other. And position where you want them to be positioned before you tighten down uh, the bow. So I'm good with that. I got, you know, everything's lined up pretty good. This one's a little, little too big and loopy. So I'm just going to take these again, and you can see where my zip tie is just hanging out on the top back here like this, and flip it over. Make sure my wire stays to the back to attach it to the wreath, and I'm going to tighten down on this as tight as I can get. And you can see, as I'm tightening it, it starts to pull these loops up so that they're not laying flat like that, but that, so that they're laying up. Now we're going to just move some of these around a little bit, shape your bow. And there's our bow. So I'm going to put these back. This is the top of our wreath, and then these are the sides, and this is where we're uh, going to put our bow. So you've got, I like to um, just snip this zip tie off the back too so that doesn't get in the way. And then make sure you don't cut your wires to attach it. Um, you see them right here. So we got two wires, one and two. And I'm just going to put these in here on each side of this. I try to get it into something so that it doesn't sag. And just like the zip ties, we just have to reach around the back. You have to kind of eyeball this on your own wreath because everybody's is going to probably look a little different. I got the wire there. If you want to see where I'm putting this, right up here in this corner behind that uh, deco mesh petal there. Because I don't want to put it down here because if I put my wire in down here, my bow's going to drop and you might see some of your mechanics up here and you don't want to do that. So. The deco mesh does get sticky, so as you're putting the bow on, you might have to unattach that to the bow. So, we'll fluff this in just a second, but I just want to show you on the back. Our wires are here. One's coming out this side, one's coming out this side, and I like to pull this as tight as I can get it and then twist. Twist the wire around. Okay? And then I'm going to fold it over my thumb and make like a loop. You can see this little loop right here that I just made and twist the loop because that will uh, make sure it's tight and secure and then just cut off the little excess and tuck that in. That way you don't have any wires sticking out in the back here or anything that's going to scratch the door. Flip this around. And then we're going to fluff our bow up. Make sure 
all the tails are hanging down. So this is why I like this unwired ribbon. I noticed that a couple of my loops are kind of longer than the other. So I'm just sliding them through there. Not pulling <clears throat> real hard, but hard enough so I can move it. And it's uh, sliding. So when you get it to where you like it in the middle there, we're going to take a look at our tails. So we've got one, two, three tails of the shear and we're just going to uh, fold that in half like a taco fold it in half like a taco and then you're going to cut from the fold side kitty corner up to the wires to dovetail it you can't really see that but it's dovetailed so we're going to do that with the other two I'm going to fold it in half, cut from the fold side up, alright so we have those three sheer ones cut and they are um, just the tails hanging down from the bow. Now this ribbon, because it's not wired, and it tends to like to fray a little bit at the end of it, I don't dovetail it for that reason. And you can see, all I do is just cut an angle and leave just one tip down. So over here, you're just gonna go, instead of folding it, you're gonna do the same cut and just angle it. And then this one's already cut at an angle too, so I don't dovetail those. I just hang those like that. So there it is. That's your wreath. This one is going to a customer today. I will be shipping it out. Um, if you have any questions, just leave the questions in the comments below, and I'll try to answer them. And um, I hope you guys are all having a great day. Thanks for watching.